طلع Hey, um, I can't hear anything. Am I on?
the foundation of blockchain and how exactly blockchain functions, consensus mechanism, etc. The 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 primitive of uh, you know uh, concept conceptual uh, things in blockchain, and uh, then we also give them a perspective of the business which is uh, you know uh, which is uh, being uh, created on top of these blockchains. Uh, uh, then we go to our module two. In the module two, we start with Rust, and uh, you know we kind of we think that uh, having a good understanding of Rust definitely gives you an edge in, uh, upon which you can kind of further build. So, uh, you know, uh, they have undergone uh, a very detailed uh, series of sessions, lectures on Rust, and not only lectures, but then they have uh, participated in polls and the outcome and the poll results shows that their understanding is uh, fantastic uh, because uh, after teaching something, we just uh, give a poll and we see how people are responding. And then, of yep. course, we've got some assignments on top of that. Then we have got some quizzes, rather. I mean, we uh, give it to them to kind of assess their level. And then we keep on improvising from session to session to uh, appreciate as to how exactly we can make it more effective. And uh, today we will be, of course, you will be giving your perspective on, uh, you know, the Polkadot specific things. And then we will be having, there is a, there is a third module, which is called guided building. In, in fact, we have learned something from uh, PBA, uh, to be fair, in which we, we have uh, we have three dApps, uh, you know, or four. We are right now in the process of making them. And then uh, these dApps have uh, some business function and uh, people will be, you know, we have sections, you know, inbuilt, which really our developers have to code. And, uh, you know, uh, once they finish those part, then the whole dApp, you know, starts functioning. And then of course they have to write the specifications technical specifications, the business specification, test cases, et cetera. Remember you and I, we had discussed some, some time back yeah. about the framework. So yeah, yeah. Trying to follow that framework in the guided building, which is going to start in the first week of September. And by doing all these things, we expect that uh, they are, of course, on a good track to, uh, you know, uh, build on Polkadot. That's what is our intention, right? Right. So... So we will uh, seven or six, maybe uh, in a couple of minutes, Max will start the session. Uh, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, why don't we uh, formally start, uh, guys, uh, a very good uh, evening to folks in India. And good morning, Radha, since you are in US right now. Uh, let me take this pleasure uh, on behalf of IBC Media to, uh, uh, you know, to thank Radha, uh, you know, for uh, giving his time for uh, talking on Polka Dot and Substrate uh, with the IBC, uh, you know, CEP fourth cohort. Uh, Radha, like I said earlier, for people who had joined earlier, Radha needs no introduction. Uh, Radha is one of the key ambassadors for Polka Dot, uh, who has. Uh, been you know uh, uh, making a lot of efforts in taking this technology this stack to uh, you know uh, to people who are you know uh, interested in building on polka dot he is trying to demystify several things polka dot is uh, you know uh, a pretty uh, you know enriched system in my opinion because i understand blockchain and i understand other blockchains as well polka dot is one of the best systems uh, Radha has, uh, you know, uh, helped people understand Polkadot in several geographies across the globe. And, uh, you know, Radha has been kind enough, uh, you know, in helping our cohorts also. In fact, Radha also has uh, helped uh, taking some sessions in our all hack. And uh, I again want to thank Radha for being here today. Radha, uh, uh, anything that you really want to say something before you start the session? Uh, no, it's always great to be part of these sessions. Um, feel free to connect with me, you know, on social media like LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, and and yeah, um, looking forward to the session. 
Thank you, brother. I think uh, stage is all yours, and uh, you know we all are, uh, you know, uh, listening to you. Please, please continue. Yeah, thank you. So, um, like Praveen mentioned, I've given this session like multiple times. I think this is the first time I'm giving this session after attending PBA. So, so certainly. Yeah. Uh, you have something new to learn from me today, even if you have attended this before. So let's get started. So this is a session on which gives you like a very high level introduction on what Polkadot is and what Substrate is. You know, Substrate, uh, I can tell that right away. So Substrate is the blockchain building framework on which you can build uh, blockchains like Polkadot and and the blockchains that run on top of Polkadot. So let's get started. Okay, so um, so first of all, like you as a developer would think, okay, so let me have a new blockchain. And, or, you know, uh, you want to pick like a blockchain to, to build a specific application, right? So the first thing you have to come up with is like, is there a need for, you know, your application or, you know, is there a need for that blockchain itself? Um, so it looked like back in 2017-ish, um, Bitcoin has been running for, for like over 80 years and, and Ethereum started. Uh, it's been uh, getting a lot of attention. Um, and then at that point of time, like, you know, lots of blockchain developers were like, okay, so are we just going to be stuck with Ethereum, you know, is is Ethereum the only blockchain out there? And then we we build applications on top of it. Um, and a lot of them felt that the answer was no. Uh, I'll I'll get into those reasons like later. And that's why there was a big explosion of different kinds of like blockchains, you know, that were out there that could do everything. Like eth Ethereum is what they call a Turing complete blockchain, meaning. You can write a program on your computer. You can deploy that program onto Ethereum and execute that successfully, right? So you can treat Ethereum blockchain like a computer. So whereas Bitcoin is not Turing complete, it can only do balance transfers. So you can't run smart contracts or any programs on Bitcoin blockchain. So in any case, so people thought about it like in, in uh, 2017. So they're like, okay, so we have so many blockchains that are coming up but uh, you know if we want to make sure these blockchains talk to each other do those blockchains have a fundamental communication layer you know so bitcoin it didn't think about communicating with other blockchains ethereum it didn't think think about like you know communicating with other blockchains so the blockchains that were developed later had that that particular thing to address so the other thing is like scaling so you have a uh, scaling issue, I mean, the number of transactions that could go into a block uh, are very limited for Bitcoin. You know, it even takes like 10 minutes for, for a block to get produced and, and there's not much activity happening there. So we're talking about 6 billion people or, or we are like 7 billion right now. Um, so if you're thinking of, of that particular scale, uh, blockchains are not there yet, right? So So there's limitation there. And you could use use up all the resources that you have, but but uh, how much scaling can you provide with with adding new resources? So that's one open problem. So the other thing is is security aspect of your blockchain. So I'm not talking about Bitcoin or Ethereum here. Those blockchains are very very secure because they have been around for a really long time. Uh, they're backed by a lot of like economic security, uh, right? So. So not those, like think about uh, top 100 blockchains uh, that are out there and then everything below, you know, 100 or so. So they're easily attackable. So you would have heard about 51% attacks or, okay, let's take over a lot of validators on that blockchain network. So you're able to influence what, what happens on that network. So yeah, so if you are starting a blockchain today, you have to bootstrap it your own security. And, and that's a difficult problem. So the other thing is customization. Okay, so fine. Now we have EVM. So EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, it comes with fixed number of instructions, uh, very less optimizations to, to begin with. And there's not much you can customize there. Okay, so you're given these tools, you have to work with those tools, right? So that's one open problem. 
and uh, blockchains in general governance let's talk about governance so um so a lot of these blockchains are out in the open and people would like to interact without having to uh, resort to like offline methods right so you don't want to make design decisions or or you know upgrade decisions on on twitter or or like uh, linkedin or or something like that you want to be able to put that governance aspect on chain as well so that that is very secure and finally upgrades so if you want to make any changes to your blockchain uh, think about like bitcoin like that software never changes right so people just run the same node uh, over and over again uh, there's a high resistance for any sort of changes in there because it it's capable of forking the network like you know there are nodes that haven't upgraded and there are nodes that are upgraded both are constructing two different chains so it's a problem like how do you upgrade a, a blockchain uh, not just for functionality but let's say somebody found a vulnerability so some sort of thing that we thought was secure was hacked and you have to make make a change to to that particular module in your blockchain how would you do that so these are the open problems in in blockchain networks especially the legacy ones before 2017 um and then came like this you know bottom up design approach right so how do how do we tackle these problems uh, so so paul cardot is one of that attempts to to solve you know all of these six problems so for that like i'd like to mention you know paul cardot again is uh, its core developers right so the core developers believe in few things so i want to show you like what their vision actually is so they think uh, the Polkadot code developers think that uh, the future is not about like a single blockchain. So they already know that the future is like multi-chain. Like, you know, there'll be, there will be multiple blockchains. There won't be a single blockchain to serve everybody's needs. Um, so, and also there's no one size fits all, right? So uh, even for shoes, you see like, you know, shoes have different sizes based on like different people. Of course, there, there must be like this one size, which is, uh, most common uh, but again like you you have outliers as well so uh, every business use case requires you know a set of resources it has its own uh, i don't know se uh, settings right so so you can't uh, you can't say that only one service will 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 sort of serve them all and also we believe in uh, openness and interoperability so uh, what's the point in, in creating like a public blockchain where the code of the blockchain is not open, right? So you should be able to verify and validate the code, ensure that it is secure, and then you you sort of build on top of it. So so that levels of openness, you know, we we are expecting that from for Web3. And we would like to make sure these blockchains can talk to each other. So that brings us to what Polkadot is. Now, Everybody here knows that Polkadot is a blockchain, but it's not just that. It's actually a, a set of blockchains. Um, so Polkadot is like a, so I'm giving a very technical definition. So I'll show you the, uh, this definition in action, like in, in a live manner, just in a bit, but, but let me just go through this definition. So Polkadot is a heterogeneous uh, sharded multi-chain protocol that connects and secures blockchains with pooled security and interoperability. So if you look at this figure, like uh, this central circle is like Polkadot blockchain and all these um, individual pink squares. So those are blockchains as well, but all of those blockchains are running in parallel to, to Polkadot blockchain. So parallel blockchains, we call them like parachains. So we have all these parachains running in parallel so now is the time for you for me to like show you this uh, live. So let me stop sharing this and then open .js. All right, so I'm gonna share that particular tab.
All right. So I hope you're able to see the screen. Let me see. Okay, see yours. Yes, Let's sir. go to uh yeah. It's one. Okay, so let's go to Network um, Explorer first. So let's see what's happening on Polkadot. Okay, so just today we, we crossed, I think, 17 million block mark. So we have like 17 million blocks. Um, I don't know what's going on with this. Yeah, so we have, we have that. And then we, so on Polkadot, like you can see all the events that are happening. You know, so there's a scheduler that is doing something. Somebody locked uh, like their balances, somebody transferred their balances. So it's like a working blockchain. So every six seconds, a new block is being generated. And uh, not just this, like you you have on Polkadot. So I said, this is a blockchain, you know, with, with like 17 million blocks. Uh, but if you go to network and parachains, so here you see that, okay, so Asset Hub, is also a blockchain. You know, it's a blockchain with 4 million blocks. Collectives is a blockchain with 1.9 million blocks and, and Akala has like 4 million blocks and so on and so forth. So you have many of these individual blockchains with like their own block numbers, but all of them are running on top of Polkadot, right? So, uh, and the reason I say these are heterogeneous is because uh, let's talk about uh, Akala. So, okay, so this is a, a parachain that's running on top of Polkadot, but it's running a business logic that's geared towards decentralized finance. So there is like um, Bitgreen, which is taking care about like um, sustainability and carbon credits. Uh, it's related to like environment, you know, so they, their blockchain logic is customized for that particular application. Uh, we have Kilt, which is for like decentralized identities. So, so every individual blockchain is doing its own thing, like you know what uh, it wants to excel in. So it's focusing on that particular aspect, and it is running on top of Polkadot, enjoying its um, security. Okay, so Polkadot validators are sort of securing the blocks from these individual blockchains. So I'll show the architecture in a bit but I'm showing this in live to you. Okay, so this 4 millionth block uh, has been included in, in this particular, you know, block on Polkadot and backed by all the validators. And after that is done, this parachain can be confident that the transactions in their blocks are sort of final, okay? So that's that's uh, an overview. We'll come back to this, this again as we progress in the presentation. Let's do... Right. Back to the presentation. Just give me a moment. screen got it okay so basically i showed you in live like polkadot it's it's a set of blockchains that are working together so they're all also able to like talk to each other right so um, that's the other aspect. Like the Polkadot architecture is is in such a way that uh, you know the validators protect these blockchains, uh, as well as like you know they they protect like their communication as well. So if one blockchain wants to talk to the other blockchain, uh, there is like the framework within Polkadot which is like very secure. So I see some questions coming in. So uh, okay, so does parachains and blockchain brothers build on Polkadot use dot for gas fee or no, so that's a really good question. So like Ethereum, which makes uh, it any sort of application built on top of it should have Ether as like gas fees, right? So on Polkadot, it's not the case. Like you 
uh, the blockchain can have its own token you know they once they become like a parachain on polkadot after that like for two years they don't have to make any transaction in dot token so that's the uh, that gives like developers predictability right so you don't know when the fees is going to spike or or dot price vol volatility is not going to affect you as as a blockchain developer on your blockchain project so the answer is no so i'll tell you when 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 the time comes and in this presentation i'll show you how you can become a parachain and after that you you secure a parachain slot uh, the parachain need not do any transaction using dot token you know from then on it can define exactly how transactions are processed uh, it is also possible to create blockchains that don't have any transaction fee so substrate and and polkadot sort of provide that levels of customizability for your blockchain thanks for that question all right so we have yeah so we basically outlined like six problems and then polkadot has a an approach for solving every individual problem there right so we have a mechanism to connect all these networks together through design from like bottom up uh, we handle traffic at a scale at the how we do it so we we said like polkadot is like a heterogeneous sharded blockchain right so these all of these can be treated as shards and polkadot is the first production ready sharded blockchain so all of these are blockchains are doing some parallel processing and that's how you you achieve uh, you know, you're able to handle traffic at scale. So if you're thinking each blockchain can handle 10,000 transactions per block, then, you know, think of all the hundreds of blocks that are being produced in parallel. So that's the level of scale we are talking about. All right, so security. So when I say security for a blockchain, I'm talking about the economic security. Uh, so right now Polkadot um, uh, has like 300 active validators who are backed by, I don't know, uh, 500 million dot uh, is backing them um, and that is in staking so people get rewards for for actually you know staking their dot uh, if the validator misbehaves we have what's called a slashing mechanism which is like a punishment and and that dot is you get rewards uh, you're uh, you're also susceptible for for like punishment so this sort of gives like polka dot uh, a lot of security so people wouldn't uh, want to run malicious software uh, that can lead to this particular slashing. Yeah, so you'll you'll also look at like Substrate, which will enable you to build these, you know, uh, customized apps. Polkadot has like one of the, uh, what do you call, uh, most sophisticated and, and working governance system. So I've given multiple talks on governance as well. Um, so where I explain like like in depth like what we achieved through Polkadot governance, and finally we have what's called forkless upgrades like self upgrades. So think of like a blockchain that is producing blocks. You don't have to stop your blockchain to patch and upgrade. So it's almost like downloading updates on your smartphone. Okay, so uh, when the blockchain is running, you are able to modify the software, the state transition function of the blockchain uh, on the fly, and then you're able to get like added upgraded features. So talking about like the team that, that's behind like Polkadot, like these are the founders. So Dr. Gavin Bird, he was the co-founder of Ethereum. He was the CTO of Ethereum. He has written Solidity. Um, he has like very in-depth knowledge of, of like Ethereum in general. And then he and his team has moved to build like Polkadot. Uh, there were multiple design decisions that that they made like you know so they decided they'll write this new blockchain in rust programming language so rust uh, right now praveen mentioned that you all have learned about rust uh, uh, you know at, in your capacity so you would have noticed like it's a very secure language so you write uh, there's very little scope for for writing uh, some buggy code in rust there's no memory related issues. It's very efficient. And that's all you, all the you know attributes you need for like a programming language that that you need for building a blockchain. So that design decision were, was made. Uh, when I talk about substrate, I'll also talk about uh, WebAssembly. 
So WebAssembly, um, you know, Wasm is uh, one of the design choices like Polkadot, um, you know, made. So, so I'll talk about it later, but yeah. So it was all like Gavin Wood's like vision to, to have all of these uh, to create like a new blockchain. And Rob is like a core developer. He has uh, basically programmed the uh, consensus system for Polkadot. Uh, and yeah, Peter, um, yeah, was also like like a founder. So I showed this interface to you. I showed like Polkadot network in live. So when I took this screenshot, like we had like nine million blocks, but now we have like seventeen million blocks. So, um, and also the network is like very. Uh, spread out so if you're interested i mean i could actually show you uh, like live uh, let me show let me also show all the nodes that are running uh, on, on polkadot let's do this share screen okay so a better view is the world view yeah so there are 2000 polkadot nodes that are live Okay, so you can see all of them are, are spread out uh, across the world. Uh, within these 2000 nodes, there are active nodes that are actually producing blocks. So for instance, a, a block was produced here and then it's broadcasted to all other nodes. So when I'm saying Polkadot network, it's, it's this one, right? So this is the decentralized uh, blockchain node network that is sort of producing blocks, uh, receiving blocks, and then deciding every individual node is constructing the blockchain uh, in its like local view. It receives blocks from other nodes and then, and then yeah. So that's how the, the network functions. Um, so... Yeah, I'm having trouble. <laughs> Switching between the screens, but I'll let me share this. Okay, let's do slideshow. Okay, so I hope you're able to see the slideshow. Um, yeah, so telemetry is like one tool that lets you peek into not only Polkadot but other you know blockchain networks in Polkadot ecosystem like Kusama, uh, Moonbeam, etc. Okay, so let's talk about the. Um, so I said these heterogeneous multi-chain, right? So this multi-chain are like, so Ethereum is talking about sharding, like, you know, parallelizing uh, the processes. So on Polkadot, like each individual process is, is a blockchain in itself, which is customized to do a specific thing. So Bitcoin, you know, it does one thing like very well. Uh, it, it keeps track of like balances. It helps you do balance transfers, but nothing more. So if you want to add any additional functionality to Bitcoin, you have to come up with some kind of innovative hacks like ordinals or I don't know. So, so you're going a, a lot of, you're stretching yourself and then using something for what it's not meant to be used for. So, and then there's Ethereum, which is like a general purpose machine where you can deploy whichever business logic you want as dApps and then, and then sort of access it. So on Polkadot, so you you don't have a lot of these general purpose uh, machines. So instead, you have like a custom blockchain that is good at doing like one specific thing or two. So Polkadot, uh, I showed to you earlier the architecture. So all of these individual parachains, um, you know, they're they're built for specific use cases. Um, and yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, a generic um, blockchain like like Ethereum. It comes with with a bit of like trade offs. So you as a developer, you don't know uh, the operating costs for the next three months. You know, at sometimes like the fees is low. If the demand is high, like the fees spikes. So there's like a lot of variability in terms of like like the fees. So you want to, if you want to create like a reliable application that that runs, in in spite of all these hikes, you have to come up with a a lot of, uh, I don't know, innovation to to create that application, and also one blockchain containing all that information it's also not that that optimal so you already see see that with ethereum state growth it's growing exponentially um yeah so there has to be and also like like the evm the ethereum virtual machine uh, it's not designed for 
complex innovations. Okay, yes, it can let you build generic applications, but we're talking about bringing Twitter or Facebook or you know other Uber or all these services that people are using. Uh, if they want to use the blockchain stack, uh, we're talking about that, like you know, uh, innovations of that scale where there are applications people use every day uh, across the world, and and you want to use a blockchain somewhere in between that technology stack, will we be able to, you know, handle that on, on Ethereum? You know, that's something you'll have to think about. So to be able to do that, like Polkadot comes up with this architecture. So we have um, a relay chain. So relay chain, is, because it relays the messages between the these parachains, so it's called relay chain, it's layer zero. Uh, and that's the main reason like Polkadot doesn't even have smart contracts. So it's supposed to be like this internet level layer. So internet, it doesn't make any assumptions on the applications that run on top of it, right? So you can run Netflix, you can run um, Uber, you can run like Facebook. Each application is targeting a specific use case and then it has its own bandwidth requirement. It, ha it, it has its own, um, I don't know, like architecture. But internet itself doesn't make any assumptions or, or pose any limitations for that. So it's an open layer for all these specific use cases to run on top of it. So that's what like Polkadot is achieving by being a relay chain and then layer one parachains. So we have plenty of these. So on Polkadot, there are around 40 parachains that are live right now. Uh, there's a common misconception. It can only support 100, but that's just like, that number is coming from like benchmarks that we did like three years ago. So now there have been a lot of optimizations. There's a lot of upgrades to the hardware uh, that, that validator nodes are running on as well. So, so that number is much, much more. Um, but yeah, so think of these hundred different blockchains running in parallel and working with each other. So that is Polkadot. And every, a, talk about any layer one blockchain out there. Uh, think about Ethereum. So Ethereum functionality, can be shipped into like one parachain. And think of like 100 different Ethereum style machines that are running parallel to each other. So that that's the uh, ultimate you know goal of Polkadot. So being able to generalize uh, a lot of like, like blockchain stuff, having like these different blockchains like run uh, in parallel. And then finally bridges, so again like, the fundamental thing I mentioned about Polkadot is like, we don't believe like we are the only chain that is going to be running. Uh, you know, there are other chains as well. The Web3 vision is like multi-chain. So we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, uh, we have like, uh, you know, Cosmos or, or different kinds of blockchains out there, which are having their own approach towards like, like Web3. So we should be able to communicate with them, right? So, so that's what like these... Um, bridges too. And, and these bridges are, will also run as parachains on Polkadot. I have a couple of questions. And yeah, so what is meant by state growth? So think about it. Like if you create an account on blockchain, okay, so that, that account has like a balance, right? So this information has to be stored somewhere. So a blockchain state is, is that like, you know, what are the accounts present on, on my blockchain network? What are their balances? You know, uh, did they create, I previously I mentioned something about like being a proxy or did they deploy a smart contract? A smart, that is part of like the state of, of the blockchain. Now with Ethereum, uh, the state growth is a problem because if you're deploying a smart contract, you're paying one-time fees. So you're just paying, okay, so this is the fees I'm paying and I'm, I'm pushing that code on, onto, the, onto the blockchain network. And after that, every blockchain node has to keep that information and you know keep replicating it or uh, with with every block like like that data is still there so there's no incentive for you to remove that that smart contract or even accounts with like very tiny amount like negligible balance they can't even make a transaction but they're still there in in the state so so as you keep adding this this inf information to to the blockchain that state uh, the storage requirement for, for the blockchain network keeps increasing. Um, yeah, so Ethereum has this problem. Uh, it's an open problem. Uh, Vitalik has has uh, suggested several uh, approaches to 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 sort of tackle this state growth uh, issue. 
but again like this was observed back in 2017 and every blockchain was coming up with a solution to ensure this doesn't happen so for instance on polkadot we have what's called existential deposit so if you have to create an account on polkadot you should have a minimum balance of one dot if your balance falls be below that one dot uh, the account is deleted from the state Okay, so if you have to create like a, a smart contract or, or like, I don't know. So you can come up with a design decision where you place a deposit and if you're no longer using that smart contract, you kill that smart contract and then you you sort of um, uh, get that deposit back. But yeah, so so state is that and, and different uh, blockchains come up with different solutions to handle that, that problem. All right, so smooth. Okay, so I won't go in the interest of time uh, very in depth about like the architecture. So this is the high level overview. So I showed you like there is a uh, there's like a parachain. Uh, you know all these individual blockchains that are running in parallel. So there's like a relay chain, and relay chain has these validators that are sort of um, you know validating like these parachain blocks. Now you might wonder like. Okay, so I am a parachain. I am also a blockchain. How am I able to run my network? So for that, you would use uh, what's called a collator node. So collator nodes, their job is to listen to the transactions that are happening in the parachain network. They create a block and then they send it over to Polkadot validators. So so the way this works is these collators are not part of the consensus of, of the blockchain. So their job is to just compile the information and send it to Polkadot network. And for that reason, you can run like a blockchain with a single node, you know, a single node that is compiling these transactions and sending. Um, so typically parachains have around like five or six collators. Some have like 40 or 50 collators. So that's your design decision. You know, how many nodes you want to run in your blockchain network, how decentralized you want that to be. And those blocks are sent to Polkadot validators and then they validate the core logic of that. Yeah, so the way it works, uh, I showed this to you in live. Um, you know, there can be a, a parachain. Uh, it's assigned like a validator set that gets like shuffled every minute. So that way nobody can target a specific parachain. So if they were to do it, they have to target the entire Polkadot network. Um, yeah, so because the, the validator set is shuffled like randomly, uh, you don't know ahead of time which validators are going to validate a specific parachain. So that gives security to, to these parachains, which is very different from other shared security models. So uh, let's say on Cosmos, like there's no concept of this shared security. You bootstrap your own security for your you know, blockchain. Anyway, so so this is, uh, so if you are interested further, like you can search for path of a parachain block and that gives you like a really good understanding of how exactly a block is created in a parachain, how it is handed over to the relay chain, how the validators like validate it uh, and, you know, back it inside the relay chain. And uh, yeah, so all that procedure is is explained thoroughly there. But I'll give you an overview, you know? So what's the point in holding back when, when you can understand a technical concept that's, you know, very intuitive. So I hope you are introduced to this uh, data structure. It's called a Merkle tree. So the way Merkle tree works is um, on blockchain. So this is all state, right? So, so there's uh, accounts like Ben, Kristen, Louise, all of them have like a certain balance. Uh, let's say there's like staking, there's like uh, democracy. So all of this is the state on a particular blockchain. Now, this state, it can be variable uh, in size. So you, what you could do is you can hash it and you get like fixed size hashes like these. So these fixed size hashes, you you again like hash them together and then you get this hash and, and you get a hash at the higher level. And then ultimately you have this state root. Now, if there is no change in, in the state of the blockchain, the state root hash will remain the same, right? So let's say there's some transaction that happened on the blockchain. So let's say Luis sent Ben like 50 
tokens. And then there's something that happened on, on democracy. Now, what happens is you, you can see that there's a change here, like in Ben's balance and Louis balance, uh, there's some change in the democracy state and all the other modules uh, within the state, they remain the same. So their hashes will be, will not modified, will not be modified. And yeah, so this is the state that has changed. And so think about like, like a big blockchain network where a lot of state remains like unchanged within a, a block transition and very few things change within it. So your goal as a parachain is to send this information. You won't send the entire state information. You send what has changed. Uh, and and yeah, so, and you send the state transition logic as well. So these are the rules of my parachain. These are the transactions that have happened. Please validate, you know, whether these transactions are following the rules that are set by me. So validators do that. They replay all these transactions with the logic of the parachain. And if everything is looking good, they sort of include that in the uh, a certificate saying that this particular block is valid on the parachain. So let's see, there's a question. So is there any size for Polkadot? Yes, so Polkadot has uh, state two. So we store all this account information on, uh, actually I can show you like, at the end of the presentation, what's the current state size of Polkadot? So, so if you're running like a Polkadot full node, uh, the the amount of space it sort of occupies gives you an idea, you know, how much uh, size it's like using. All right. Okay, so I hope uh, this gave you uh, this gave you like a good overview of of like how all of this is working. Uh, now let's talk about like Substrate, right? So Substrate is the blockchain building framework. Um, so I, I gave you a lot of, uh, you know, uh, hype that you can build uh, this customizable blockchain. So so this is the framework that lets you do it. And how do you do that? You, you have all these battle-tested libraries. So you have seen like Polkadot has been running and all of the blockchains within Polkadot have been running for the past three years. Um, without like vulnerabilities, like, you know, all these modules are, are out there. So you are able to use them, reuse them in your own blockchain and then sort of uh, build stuff. So for that, like what we have is called, uh, you know, what we call it frame. Uh, it has like a huge, uh, you know, there's a framework for runtime aggregated, like modularized entities. In the end, it's like a library that you could just import and then sort of do your work on top of. Um, so the way it works is, uh, let's say today I wanted to build a blockchain. Okay, so so what I'm gonna think about is like, okay, so my blockchain needs like accounts functionality, my blockchain needs staking functionality, maybe my blockchain will need democracy. So then it's almost like drag and drop of these um, blocks. So these frame palettes, palettes are like these libraries. So I can just bring them into my blockchain core runtime and then run the blockchain node. And from day one, like block number one, I have all this functionality with me. I think now is the time I show you uh, like a demo. Uh, let me yeah, stop sharing this. And yeah. Okay, so let's go to Substrate node template. All right, share screen. All right, so I'm sharing my, my whole like desktop. So we have like a substrate node template. Okay, so, so this node template is uh, basically a blockchain network, like from scratch. So you could download this this uh, template and then sort of compile it. And I have it ready here. Okay, so on GitHub, I have Substrate node template. Um, I have it open on, on my terminal. So let me close. Okay. So basically I'm gonna close this. So with Substrate node template, I'm opening a terminal. Okay, so I have this, uh, and in here, 
uh, earlier I sort of um, built built the blockchain network. Okay, so so let me do that build like live in front of you. So basically, for you, if you download and and do this, it it would take time. I already pre compiled it, uh, but anyway, so it's compiling the blockchain node, and this comes with like some functionality. So let me show you where it is. So this is, uh, so I told you like palettes, right? So palettes are like these custom uh, logics that you can write. So here I have like a template palette. So let me go to the li library file. And again, like like you'll be introduced to, to all of the structure of the palette, but I'm gonna show you like a few things here. So here it says public function do something, okay? And then there's a public function cause error. So this is just like a template showing you, okay, you can write functions like this to do something or to cause error or whatever. And then there is a way for you to like even import palettes from, uh, you know, the external library. So you can see that here. So in runtime, so you see that we imported like balances palette. So you just had to write this one line of code to go to this GitHub repository, go to that particular branch of Polkadot and import balances palette. Now, just by including this and, and a bunch of other lines, you're able to give like balances functionality to your blockchain right from, from the beginning. All right, so we have the node compiled. So let me, so I'm, once the node is compiled, it goes to target, uh, you know, folder here. And then uh, because I'm, compiling it in debug mode. So in debug, like there is a node template binary. So I'm I'm initializing that in, in a developer mode. So let me do that. Okay, so it started like a substrate node. So on my computer live, I have like a, a blockchain node that, that is started. So it imported like block number one. And then because it's, it's running just on my machine, there is no peers. So it's not connected to anybody. Uh, yeah, so it's basically producing blocks now. So we are at block number three. Now this is too cluttered. Let me show you how you can look into this blockchain in a better way. So you can go to Polkadot.js. So Polkadot.js gives you like this front end for, okay, so, so this is connected to Polkadot, but let's go to development and let's connect to the local node. So let me move this here and then I'm switching this. Yeah. So basically you can see on my local node, I have block number eight, the same information it's being shown in, in a much better fashion here. So I have block number nine, good. And then I told you that, so go to developer and extrinsics. So here I showed you that we already have like balances palette, right? So balances let you transfer balances from, from one account to the other. And to include this, it was almost like a drag and drop. So there's one line that I included. And I also showed to you the template module earlier, which had like two functions. So one is do something, the other one is cause error. Now you as a parachain developer are going to add this functionality to, to your blockchain. So the moment you are familiar with Substrate, writing uh, these uh, functions would, would be intuitive. So you write them and then you're able to access them directly from uh, this interface. You know, you're able to interact with them. So I can show you a couple of examples. So on Polkadot, I showed you uh, earlier, there are parachains that, that do specific things. So let's go to Akala, uh, which is like a DeFi parachain. So if you look at their extrinsics, so you have um, DeFi related stuff. Like there's a DEX, there is like an Oracle, there is a, I don't know, there's a Dex Oracle. They also have like EVM compatibility. So they have EVM, EVM accounts, and so on and so forth. They have NFTs. Uh, and I mentioned to you, there's something called as Bitgreen that is doing uh, environment carbon credits related uh, work. So if you go to their palettes, so they have, yeah, so they have carbon credits, they have carbon credit pools. Let's see like what they have in carbon credits. Yeah, so they added all these functionalities to their blockchain. So every single parachain on Polkadot, you know, let's go to Quilt that does like uh, decentralized identity. Um, yeah, so they have, yeah, DID, which is like decentralized um, identifier, right? So, so every blockchain has 
mastered the substrate uh, you know development pipeline and they are creating like their own pallets and they're reusing a lot of other stuff so so they didn't have to build uh, you know balances pallet on their own so they're importing like the balances pallet from like substrate uh, frame library so let me go back to the local node again so we are in the uh, explorer block number 33 every six seconds I'm producing a block, which is fine. Uh, let me do something with this blockchain. Okay, so let's go to accounts. Because this is like a template node, it comes with like a pre-configured uh, test account. So we have Alice account with a million tokens. So let me transfer some tokens from Alice to 30. Okay, let's do this. Transfer, sign this up. Okay, the transaction is successful. It is in block. If you want to verify this, this thing on your own, you could go to Network and Explorer. Okay, so there's a balance transfer happened from Alice to Ferdy. So many tokens were, were sent. And then there's another event saying Ferdy's account has been endowed with, with this particular balance, right? So, so that is there. So it's like a live uh, blockchain node that, that you're able to... Uh, yeah, that you're able to like play with a little right from uh, the beginning. Let me stop this. So the moment I stopped it, the, uh, you know, the chain stopped working. Uh, I can go to this code and, you know, runtime. I, I told you runtime is the brains of the blockchain, right? So let's look at its source code. Uh, in here, you have um, a way to customize like your blockchain. So here you're saying balances are U128. You know, so U128 is the unsigned, uh, you know, 128 bit uh, uh, primitive in, in Rust. Uh, so balances can be can be that big. Uh, we have like a hashing algorithm here. Uh, so I want to show you something interesting here. Okay, so so right now, I told you substrate is very uh, flexible, right? So right now a block is being produced every six seconds. So I could actually change this to one second if I wanted to. So let me save this um, and yeah, let me compile this again. Um, yeah, so let it do its work, but but I'm gonna show you like other things uh, in here. So you have like multiple palettes that I mentioned, right? So let's look at balances palette here. So palette balances. So here um, I mentioned to you like, um, you know, existential deposit. So existential deposit, like you have an ability to, to sort of set uh, the value that you want here, you know, so you can customize that as well. You can customize other parameters here, like, you know, how many reserves and how many locks can be there. So here, for instance, there are 50 locks on, on the, uh, on the balances palette, et cetera. Uh, and yeah, so, and then finally you have what's called a construct runtime. So this is where you're compiling the brain of the blockchain. So you're putting all these individual palettes together along with the template module. Okay, so template module is what we saw earlier with that do something, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you're putting all this together and then and then compiling this in, into blockchain logic. Okay, so, so this uh, thing compiled. Now I'm going to run the same node and show you that uh, this node will, will run like with one, one second block time. So let's let's validate that. So so now the block production is really fast. Uh, let me connect to. Yeah, so let me connect. Yeah. So every block is is being produced like like in one second. So then. Yeah. So 15, 16, 17. Now you have like a block producing every second. If if I added new business logic uh, to my blockchain, so that will be visible here, and and that's. Something we can do like like later, like uh, when you get to Substrate Tutorials, you'll see how to add a new palette, how to modify contents in, in a new palette. You'll be seeing all of this uh, in live there. So I'll see the questions. We have some questions. Um, so Polkadot, I have observed fewer on-chain transactions coming in transaction occur on panel. Yes, so that's that's precisely the thing, right? Like you would want to make uh, blockchain specific transactions on. So Polkadot is like a layer zero. And then it, it's its job is to just validate parachain blocks. And its job is to 
like let them talk to each other. Uh, and again, you have balances functionality on, on Polkadot. The future um, design of Polkadot will look like all of those functionalities will be on parachains also. So basically, you're going to have like a governance parachain, you're going to have account balances parachain, uh, and Polkadot will be like this very thin internet style blockchain layer that does, uh, you know, parachain block validation and, and assisting in their communication. All right, so let's do this slideshow. Yeah, so basically you're, you're able to um, drag and drop like these, these pallets and then create like a new blockchain. And there are three uh, key things in, in a substrate template node that I've shown to you. Now, the node is just running on my computer, but if I give this binary to multiple people, they can also run the nodes on their computer. They both discover each other, and then we have a blockchain network with like three different nodes running across like, you know, three different machines in uh, across the world. And all of that networking aspect is taken care by lib peer to peer protocol. So lib peer to peer protocol is uh, developed by the people who uh, created IPFS. So if you heard of Filecoin, IPFS, so that's the team behind lib peer to peer protocol. It's a networking stack. So what uh, we did, Polkadot took that networking stack, it tweaked a little bit, and then it's using that as the networking layer. And then for the core logic, the application logic of the blockchain, we are using WebAssembly. So WebAssembly, you can think of that like um, like JavaScript in a way. So it's, it's able to run on browsers. Um, so WebAssembly it can be treated like, like its own virtual machine. It has instructions uh, and it, 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 in, it executes those, those instructions in near native speeds. So this is really great uh, in a way because EVM, the innovation is, is sort of uh, capped. Like you can't do much about EVM now. If you even change a little bit, like a lot of overhead uh, comes to Ethereum blockchain, they have to uh, upgrade. And, and yeah, we saw how much effort it took to have like merge like happen, right? So, so Wasm WebAssembly, it's being worked by companies like Google, Facebook, all of these companies are improving the fundamental tech stack of WebAssembly. And then we are using that WebAssembly machine uh, as our brains for, for the blockchain, you know? So, so it's, you can count on this, this technology. It's like future proof. Uh, we're talking about blockchains for the next 10, 20 years. So this is the choice that Polkadot went with. And not just Polkadot. I think there are other blockchains that have WebAssembly, uh, you know, brains as well. And then for consensus, we have like what's grandpa, like the researchers at Web3 Foundation, which is where I work at, like they developed this consensus mechanism and it let, it gives you, I think I forgot to show you like Polkadot consensus earlier. So let me go back. Um, see here, Network Explorer. So if you see, there's a best block and then there's a finalized block. So best block is like, uh, if it's 18, the finalized is 15. So typically the finalization, the block finality, it lags by like three blocks or two blocks, which is about 20 seconds. So every transaction that, that goes on to like Polkadot is going to be finalized within 20 seconds. All right, so there's a question here. Are there any challenges Polkadot faces with respect to parachains with regards to block time, so delay chain and interoperability? That's a very good question. So I told you Polkadot's uh, block time is like six seconds, right? So each block is produced in six seconds and it is finalized in 20 seconds. Now, there are a few blockchains that, that you know may want like faster finality times. So Substrate being like so flexible, I'll show you a live network that that's um, that's running. It's called Aleph Zero. Let's go here. So what these people did was they used Substrate blockchain building framework, and then they created a blockchain with one second finality time. So they are able to use a different consensus engine, which is based on directed acyclic graphs. So that's like cutting edge, like consensus 
you know mechanism right now like people are exploring uh, but yeah so uh, one problem with that is you see they started like much later than than like polkadot but they already have like 56 million blocks uh, on their account uh, on their like network or whatever so it is possible that that you have the ability to to even change the block times of of your you know blockchain network but this lf0 uh, cannot run directly as a parachain on Polkadot because, uh, you know, they have their own consensus. They are not using Polkadot security. So for instance, if you go to staking on, on their thing, so they are running like their own like validators, right? So, so they had to bootstrap their own security for doing this. Now, what they did was, I think I can show you. So LF0, to, to make sure they, they have connection with, with like Polkadot, they actually won like a parachain slot on Polkadot and then they're connecting to Polkadot as a bridge. Okay, so so that way, so what LF0 can do is they have the transactions, they're finalizing within one second and, and there's a concept called as anchoring. Like you have the same even in Ethereum. So if you want something to be very secure, you, you do it in, in your own like blockchain and then you anchor like a hash or something on a much more secure blockchain. So that gives you added security. So that's that's what like LF0 can, can do with their blockchain. So if you want, they, they can finalize it with a limited security in a, you know instantly. And then after 20 seconds, their transaction is even having like a lot more security than, than just that. So, so that is all possible. And, and the innovation, it's like, there's no bounds to, to what you can achieve. So, so you can have like a gaming application running on LF0, which takes care about like, like you know, high, high frequency transactions. And then in batches, it can sort of deploy that onto Polkadot if it needs. All right, so let's, okay, so yeah, like I mentioned, uh, try it out, like uh, run a substrate node. It's running on my machine. Uh, it requires very limited uh, resources. It takes a bit of time to compile, but but you know, so it can run on your machine. Um, if you don't want to install all of this, and then if you want to try it out, so click on uh, this link. It's called play, playground.substrate.dev. Um, so this is like a. All you need is like is a GitHub account. So let me go to the node template. Uh, actually. This doesn't have a lot of capacity, so I would say don't try it right away. Uh, but later on, if you if you just want to test, uh, have a sense of like what this node is and how it is running, you you can run it on, on the cloud. Uh, so we have this playground. So once this starts, you are able to connect to this playground account, uh, blockchain network through through this. So you can say open Polkadot.js apps. Uh, so yeah, so the blockchain just started. So if I open Polkadot.js, so it's connected to my GitHub ID, playground.substrate.dev. And, and yeah, so you have the block number three that is being produced. And then, yeah, so you have block number three right there. So that's something you can you can explore later. Um, and yeah, so Substrate is, is a broad framework and Polkadot is built on, on top of it. Um, so if you look at Polkadot libraries, they're a subset of Substrate. And Substrate has a lot more functionalities like smart contracts, NFTs, all of them are already there. You can just import them into your blockchain network and then uh, do it. So there's also like tutorials like Substrate Kitties uh, that show you how to develop like your own palette. And at any point of time, if you're coming up with like a new blockchain use case, try to see if someone has already built uh, that thing and look at their open uh, libraries. So for that, I, I recommend like uh, Polkadot.wiki. So if you go to so wiki.polkadot.network, there's like a open open source stack. Right. So if you go there, yeah. So think of like anything uh, blockchain related. You have, you know you have like libraries, so I can click on anything. So CLI wallet, so sub wallet. So let me click on that. It takes you to the uh, GitHub repo. Uh, you can check like how they have implemented it. You can fork it. 
you can start like working on it. And a lot of these projects, they are also funded by the um, Web3 Foundation. So Web3 Foundation ensures that all the del deliverables are open, you know, so they have to make their deliverable open source. So you're able to import this and then sort of uh, build, build on top of it. So we have that. Um, and yeah, parachains were all launched and they're all live. They're running in parallel. Um, and and yeah, so I think in the interest of time, I'll, I'll probably skip uh, all of this. So I mentioned to you, there is the ability to upgrade a chain like when it's running. Uh, I have a demo, but but again, like I can show it to you probably in the next session, or I'll, requ I'll request them to show you this. So it's possible to to just swap the wasm blob. Okay, so so the way it works is I told you all the core logic of the blockchain is in this wasm blob. So at this particular block, that gets swapped with the with the new blob, new brains, and then the next block is produced based on that state transition logic. So that's level of innovation is is missing in legacy blockchains. So there, uh, a node has to reinstall the binary and then run it. Uh, and the ones that don't uh, run the upgraded binary, they're going to have like a fork. And then also blockchain interoperability is is uh, live on Polkadot. So you would have heard that there, there are plenty of hacks that happen on bridges. Um, so Polkadot's uh, answer to this is like the secure blockchain communication mechanism, it, which is through XEM. Um, so if someone were to hack uh, even a single communication message between these parachains, they have to hack entire Polkadot network. So every communication is is sort of uh, secured by this multi, you know, billion dollar uh, economic security that that Polkadot gives. Um, yeah, and also the language it it because we assume that these blockchains are going to change their logic uh, and upgrade like their features. So XCM has like an XCM executor that you can configure. So before the upgrade, let's say this is the pipeline of the message, and after the upgrade, you know it may not be the same. So what you do is you route it through the XCM executor, and you have the ability to. So XM is like like a English language, okay? So transfer uh, this token from this account to that account, you know? And the XM executor interprets that and then each parachain may have its own logic for, for executing that, that instruction. So that is done within the blockchain that way. Um, yeah, so actually XM is sort of live. I can show things to you in live right now, you know, this moment. So this is the XM dashboard. Just 54 seconds ago, like someone sent from Asset Hub to Interlay, like USDT. Uh, okay, so the, there are so many parachains, like 23 parachains support like XM transfers between each other. So you have uh, these lines between these parachains showing that there are channels that are open. And all of that, all this uh, communication is being secured by the whole Polkadot network. Um, okay, that's two. And yeah, one thing is like every line of code that makes it to Polkadot protocol, it's thoroughly audited. So chances are very, very slim uh, that, you know, people will be able to find vulnerability. We also have bug bounties to ensure that, you know, these uh, white hat hackers, like they're able to give us the information when, when you know, it's critical, but yeah, so, everything goes through a thorough audit before like even making it there. So yeah, so there's Web3 Foundation and, and Parity. So we have a lot more other teams coming up in the ecosystem that are sort of developing the protocol. Plenty of projects that, that are uh, live already. And, and if you're looking for like some kind of funding, I would say you can go to the grants program of Web3 Foundation. So We've already received like 1500 applications. We funded 550 in over like 50 plus countries. So you can, if you already are familiar with, with like blockchain development, Rust and Substrate, uh, or even tooling, like, you know, JavaScript or, or uh, any sort of front end tooling that you have. So we have a list of RFPs that you can, you can take a look at. Okay, so 
can pick up like any of these, make a proposal and then get your grant sort of funded. So yeah, there's also like this uh, application process, like there are different funding uh, opportunities within the ecosystem. So go for them, apply, get feedback. So if you want a list of grants that were, you know, so there's so many waves that, that happened. Uh, this is the recent wave, so you can go to that. Um, yeah, so if you, the grants repository, it's all um, open. evaluators all of that is transparent you're able to uh, you know see all the feedback and then and then act on it and yeah so so with that i end today's presentation so that's my contact details uh, feel free to add me on on linkedin and then we can be in touch if you have any questions thank you yeah, Radha, wow. uh, thank you so much. That was really, really interesting. And uh, also thank you for taking out the uh, Q&A uh, all, all the same. So guys, uh, uh, Radha Krishnan Desari is, uh, has been uh, very grateful and uh, humble in accepting all always our invites whenever it comes to sessions and on-ground hackfest and uh, coming up and helping us in imparting the knowledge about Polkadot blockchain. And also you should definitely connect with Radha uh, because... Uh, if you need any help in whatever you're trying to build in the career building program and obviously furthermore going into the uh, hardcore building uh, uh, when you're working on your particular own projects. So I think uh, he can be a really important guiding light for all of you. Radha, once again, uh, thank you so much. It was really wonderful having you here. And uh, and uh, Praveen sir, I think uh, if you're available, if there's anything uh, you would want to add before we come to the final remarks of the session. No, it's, I think, uh, thanks, uh, Deepak. Uh, thank you, Radha. I think it's always wonderful to hear you. And it was definitely very insightful. And people who were not able to make it today, uh, they would be, we would be sharing this recording with them so that, you know, they could uh, understand things offline also. Uh, I, would all, uh, I would only encourage people here uh, that, you know, this is a journey that, like, you know, if people like Radha, they, when they go through the PDA, uh, block, uh, Polkadot Blockchain Academy, so you guys are very starting in your in your very starting phase of your development career, right? So uh, don't be disheartened. It is it's a complex technology. I think uh, overall it will take time for you to. Uh, and another, I have been telling uh, you know all the cohort people exactly the same thing that uh, this may not really look very uh, friendly in the beginning, but then be uh, persistent in this, and you will get there. So uh, you know your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I totally agree. I mean. Even for me, so I my focus was I was like a teaching professor in uh, artificial intelligence, right? So I did my research in computer vision. I had no background in blockchain technology, uh, but I was very fascinated about it. And then I I ventured into it. I started my job at Web three Foundation. So the first three months, all I did was like you know the Rust textbook. So I I tried to master like Rust language, and then I looked at like Substrate, uh, being like an open source you know, thing, it has its pluses and minuses. One is the documentation. It's very hard to keep it like up to date. You know, you'll, even when you're looking at the tutorials, we wouldn't say that it'll be very perfect. In fact, like we have assembled a team that will revamp the whole documentation for, for Substrate, uh, making it like much more, um, you know, beginner friendly. So, so yeah, we had to, I mean, I personally had to like run all those tutorials and then I found a lot of like mistakes in there. I created PRs to to correct them on on the repo, and that's my learning curve. And uh, the pinnacle of that learning curve was PBA. Like after two years, I I went to the blockchain academy, and then now I have like a a very broad overview of like you know the whole development cycle. But yeah, it's it's a it's it's a continuous process, right? So, uh, but for me, like when I developed my own palette. You know, that was the time that that I really felt the strength, uh, you know. So I have, think about like uh, Bitcoin, you know, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto or whoever, they had this world-changing idea. They took a lot of effort in creating that blockchain and then giving it. Now, if I have an idea, I know within one hour, I am able to deploy this blockchain live and then, you know, distribute the binaries and people can run it, right? So 
That's a, it's a very powerful tool that is available for you. Once you understand how it works, you have the whole stack, front end, the, the back end, like the blockchain database, everything is taken care of. Networking is taken care of. And all you have to do is like, you know, create applications that are useful and then sort of deploy it. So it's uh, that, yeah. So that that's what I would say. So once you learn that you are a much more like powerful person uh, in the world, right? So in a way. Well, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And I guess apart from whatever knowledge you have gained, all of you from, all of us from Radha, basically, uh, other than that, you know, you also should feel motivated by uh, listening to Radha's story and uh, how exactly he got into blockchain. And if people like Radha, they have to, uh, they take two years to reach to a level, uh, definitely uh, must have been progressive. I don't deny that, but still to reach to a level, it takes some time. So uh, you guys are still beginning. So I'll only say that uh, don't be disheartened uh, if things things. No, look. it's not about this being disheartened. I think if you go like one step at a time. So even with with your current skills, you have like your place in Web three. Like you know, if you're good at JavaScript, it's plenty of uh, avenues for you to step into like Web three and then learn about like the underlying things. So even like core blockchain developers, they are limited in number. You know, a lot of blockchain developers are application developers, mm -hmm. and uh, so what I talked about today is like very core thing, right? Like being able to change primitives, being able to customize blockchain at, at like the very base level. Uh, so there are different tiers of knowledge. So few, uh, uh, you know, knowledge modules, they are easier, you know, to, to get started with. So you can drag and drop like a palette, see it working, you know, get that satisfaction that, yeah. So I'm able to do, create a blockchain, import palettes and then work with them. The next step is writing your own palette. Okay, so I've written my own palette and then I see, okay, I'm not happy with the, the API that is being given to me. Let me write my own API. So you go gradually down and down and down and then you uh, you get this full stack like blockchain development overview. But yeah, so nothing to get disheartened about. I think there's plenty of like support system for you. Uh, if you come with like a use case, okay, I want to build like a, a blockchain that stores uh, land, you know, transactions in, in my state. Okay. So, and then I can tell you like, like a idea. Okay. So where do you have to, does it need a blockchain or does it, uh, can I like sort of deploy that on an existing blockchain? Uh, all of this, this brainstorming can, can be done. Like, yeah. Wonderful. So thanks Radha. Uh, thanks for your time today. And, uh... We will be, uh, you know, uh, talking soon, very soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank bye you. bye. Deepak Singh, over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Radha. The, so the last line from Radha was basically you can come up and uh, go and reach out to him for the ideas. Uh, so I think you can take a cue from that and definitely go and ping him if you have anything to speak or discuss. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it would be a great conversation and a great opportunity to learn from him. Uh, remember, keep asking questions on the WhatsApp group, on the Discord server, and yeah, we'll be trying to help you as much as we can all the time. Uh, you know, our availability is there. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in today. We'll be seeing you all very soon. Uh, uh, the next uh, session will be held by Deepak Chaudhary, which will be on Substrate. Uh, and yeah, there's, uh, this is just the start of the blockchain space. Uh, now we are entering from Rust to Substrate in the proper blockchain world starting with Polkadot substrate. So yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a little uh, steeper rise from here on when uh, uh, when we consider the technicality aspect of the entire process. So yeah, uh, try to prepare in advance, try to see the curriculum that we have on the platform. And I think you'll be able to, uh, uh, I would say appreciate better in words of Praveen sir. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great night. Uh, see you all very soon. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Praveen, sir, for taking out the time. Uh, thank you for the entire team for this wonderful session with Radha. And it was really fantastic hearing from him. And yeah, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Take care.